You're basically on the hunt for sexual, physical fulfillment uh, in the secretive and yes. forbidden type of meetings. Turn on your favorite radio station for one more hour. And uh, if you're, of course, an avid listener of the show, you would know that uh, this part of the show is known as Pillow Talk. And that is where we engage you in conversation. And uh, tonight is no different, although we've got a guest in the studio. And, of course, we'd love for for you to also, you know, engage and uh, talk to us with regards to the topic that we have for tonight. She is a clinical psychologist and her name is Edwina Mensah. Hasselman. Good evening to you and uh, thank you so much for taking our time. A wonderful evening to you, Nishan, and the rest of the listeners out there. Let's start from the very beginning. How has your day been? Hectic, <laughs> like I told you. Yeah, very hectic. Yeah. Huh? A lot yes. of things to do. Yes, back to back sessions, yeah. running the private practice, yeah. having some psychoeducation, mm-hmm. having some consultations and check ins yeah. with my colleagues, being the supervisor, yeah. being a full-time mum after yeah. work. <laughs> I just came from grade four social studies, yeah. uh, uh, revamping my knowledge there, uh-huh. and then also being a loving wife. And yes. yeah, I popped <laughs> back into the shoes yeah. of a psychoeducator tonight. Mm, psychoeducator, uh, your line of work, w- what does that entail? Mental health. Yeah. That means cognitive and emotional health. Yeah. I specialize in psychopathology, mm-hmm. what we call as abnormality mm-hmm. to the norm that we find weird, ill, yeah. unhealthy, uh, unorthodox, and yeah. so forth. And um, I love working in the field of healing, yeah. but also in developmental work mm-hmm. and uplifting people and help them to grow as well Mm -hmm. to their full potential. Mm -hmm. I specialize, like I said, in more disorders um, and also in relationships and rehabilitation when it comes also to substance abuse. And yes, like I told you, (laughs) I can rant and rave about my calling, my passion, my life's work. So basically, in a nutshell, you are a heroine. Amen and amen. I take the blessing. <laughs> okay, let's get right into uh, the, the the business of things for tonight in terms of pillow talk. Uh, the conversation is around new relationships and uh, sex, and I think we should very uh, we, we should start basically from the very beginning when a uh, when a relationship starts. It's new. Surely new, new. <laughs> yeah, very new. Uh, so you, you're there wondering, okay, so when does it happen? When does it happen? Some people, for different people, it's 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 different. They've got different views when it comes to that. Some say they don't they don't want to break the ninety day rule. Others say, uh, well, oh, even if it's on the first day, there's something like that. Wow. Okay, we got to know each other first mm-hmm. and and all that other kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So when is it right, or when is the right time to have sex when you are in a new relationship? <clears throat> As an icebreaker, <laughs> yeah. at the right time. <laughs> that is just to open the topic on yeah. a lighter note. But yeah. the easy answer yeah. definitely would be when both parties involved, to be very diplomatic, yeah. are ready. Yeah. A healthy mm. and a respectful relationship will ensure that the two people are ready and mm-hmm. willing to have sex. That might be right at the beginning mm-hmm. at, for some. Mm-hmm. So this 90-day rule <laughs> won't fly for that couple. Yeah. It can be later on in the relationship. Sure. And some people still in this day and age prefer uh, to have sex in marriage. Mm. So it's still a thing. It's yeah. not uh, entirely <laughs> outdated. Yeah. The key here, Nishon, yeah. like with everything, mm-hmm. communication is key. Very so much. when yeah. we have an actual conversation with our partner about sex, that would lead us into making the right decision mm. and right choice. Mm. Now, the next follow-up question certainly should be, when is one ready? Mm. Mm. How will you know yeah. when you when are ready, ready to yeah. have sex? Mm. And there are a few answers, Okay, a solution to that 
question. It depends on the level of the intimacy between yeah. the two people. Yeah. And intimacy, as we know, is an interpersonal. It's a two-way street sure. of emotional familiarity. Sure. Um, yeah, it's a bit eerie to jump into bed, <laughs> into another person's body. Yeah. And your souls didn't connect, your emotions didn't connect. Mm. And it should be occurring when both people are willing and ready to be vulnerable. Mm. To be literally mm. naked in terms of their souls as mm. well as their bodies with one another, mm. being very open mm. and very sharing. Mm. Uh, and this can entail, like I already referenced, when it comes to the cognitive, our thoughts, our intellect, emotionally, physically and spiritually yeah. as well. I have learned from people that we can lose a bit of our soul the more we engage with other parties because it is a transaction of a give and a take. Yeah. And the different forms of intimacy may develop at different paces for all of us. Yeah. At different degrees mm -hmm. in terms of intensity. Now, Sean, it is best to have sex when your emotional intimacy mm -hmm. has developed to a point you both trust each other. Mm -hmm. Trust means accountability, mm -hmm. uh, honesty, yeah. having each other's backs, both effort in the relationship, yeah. um, and that we really are kind and thoughtful with each other. Mm, there we go. You can, of course, also join in on the conversation on new relationships uh, and sex. The studio number is 061-383-484, 061-383-484. That is the studio number. We've got a uh, clinical psychologist in the studio, Edwina uh, Mensa Hasselman, talking to us uh, about uh, all things regarding uh, this topic. So if you've got any questions as well, you're more than welcome to, of course, uh, come through and ask your questions live on air. There we go. We continue with the conversation right after this. It's Mariah Carey on 99 FM with uh, We Belong Together. Perhaps something you would say, uh, you know, when you're in a brand new relationship with someone. But hey, I guess, you know, things like time actually have, uh, I don't know, I, I, let me just leave it at that, okay? It's a pillow talk, and we've got a clinical psychologist in the studio, Edwina, talking to us about new relationships and sex. And just before the music, we uh, spoke about, or she spoke about, of course, uh, the right time to have sex when in a relationship. Uh, you're more than welcome to also join in on the conversation if you'd like to add, if you'd like to uh, ask any questions. Uh, she's more than willing to, of course, uh, uh, give you some answers there with regards to areas where you might need help with. 0613834844 is the studio number. Let's get back right into the conversation. Uh, Edwina, what are the common mistakes that couples make in, in, in a relationship? Now, Sean, since we ended off with communication, yeah. uh, being a critical part of intimacy, mm -hmm. uh, often we don't communicate effectively mm -hmm. and we can go and reference online the seven C's of communication as a toolbox for us, mm. uh, how we can aid us in communicating proper, like, for example, concise and concrete. Mm. Uh, uh, those are one of them. And this lead to us if we miscommunicate to misunderstandings. Yeah. That's very famous in uh, loving, intimate relationships, mm -hmm. our feelings get hurt, mm -hmm. um, and we have these tiresome conflicts, yeah. usually of the same type of themes, mm -hmm. because we speak past mm -hmm. one another, mm -hmm. or we, s we listen to defend ourselves and to respond. Another common mistake, having un realistic expectations mm. the clever people say don't have expectations I think that's in itself also abnormal and unrealistic <laughs> <laughs> so I'm obviously not one of the clever people yeah. 
yet we have, especially with a new, fresh, we expect everything to run smoothly yeah. and all happy days and yeah. smiles and roses all the way, mm. the honeymoon phase, until mm. we are weirdly, I don't know why, <laughs> <laughs> then surprised. And, yes. and then disappointed later on. Mm. So we should not expect too much from the relationship itself mm. and our partner, especially in the beginning. Mm. Um, and we tend to rush into commitment. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. <laughs> for that matter. But uh, many a times we are not ready and we partner up and we engage and we commit ourselves to an exclusive relationship mm. um, and without establishing trust and intimacy mm. uh, that's a bit far-fetched mm. and then this can also lead then uh, that we disappoint or alienate ourselves and our partners uh, especially with some examples of commitment of sure. moving in together sure. you know or marrying this uh, uh, hasty romance yeah. people marrying within three months mm. uh, and so on that's a bit uh, hasty and some of the common problems mm. failing to maintain your own individual boundaries yeah. and personal interests many a times we get so consumed by this new love affair yeah. <laughs> and we get so obsessed about the other party that we lose ourselves and we've learned especially online saying the experts that we should not lose ourselves to try and find the other person mm. we should still authentically step up individually mm. Mm. Uh, irrespective of gender age uh, uh, in the relationship mm. you should maintain your autonomy your independence and mm. bring your full self to the relationship mm -hmm. and also being able to be yourself mm. in the relationship obviously in a good way we also need to step up when it comes to our shortfalls sure. and then the green monsters could you guess jealousy Je makes you nasty yeah insecurities <laughs> yeah. possessiveness yeah. unfounded suspicions and speculations and mm. this happens usually when the person has personality drawbacks sure. and also past hurts and traumas sure. that the person haven't resolved we will shortly come to that yeah. that you carry over into this new relationship and it can really erode the trust in the relationship create tension in the relationship mm -hmm. And finally, the grand finale of one of the mistakes is the greatest mistake is to ignore these red flags that we just mentioned. Yeah. And there was a study published in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships. And these researchers found that couples who reported more relationship mistakes early, very early with the onset of a new relationship were more likely to experience breakups later on. Yeah. Irrespective of trying to control and salvage uh, factors and, uh, and mitigate it, uh, also such as age, gender and education level. Mm. So if you've got a new thing going, you've got this new present, yeah. you better try to step <laughs> out <laughs> in a, a conscious style, yeah. not to screw it up. Because then when it falls, you need to build a, mu a mosaic yeah. from scratch. Yeah. And, and that's not so very interesting as the product out of the factory sure. engaging the person new sure. uh, on a clean slate in a new relationship. I quickly just want to go back to uh, the green monsters that you mentioned there. Okay, so I got into this new relationship all excited. Uh, it's the honeymoon phase. And then these green monsters just start showing up um, out of nowhere. What kind of advice do you have for 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 someone like me like you mentioned this could come from uh past relationships or past trauma or that type of situation would you say i step out of the relationship and fix that situation first before i continue or do do i continue working um um, um on myself within it's the relationship unique. 
Yeah. It's very unique depending on the individual. Yeah. So we can do parallel both. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be the mature thing, I would say, to step out okay. and take a break. Mm-hmm. And and once we are really in love, mm-hmm. loving one another, uh, we give each other space okay. to work on ourselves and to to, to show up as our best selves. Mm. Yet, if, if uh, so we do have insecurities as humans, and yeah. these things come from insecurities yeah. caused by past hurts and disappointment and yeah. traumas. So, um, I would say that um, we need to work around ourselves in terms of securing ourselves that we are enough for ourselves and for the next person, and yeah. that we are deserving of that person and also vice versa. So as much as you are afraid to lose the other person, so should the other person be. And you know what? If there is a real intimacy, Mm -hmm. you won't readily have such fears. It would cross Mm -hmm. your mind, but it won't become this real alive monster that wants to harm you, eat you up in the relationship and stand in your way to success. Love that. Love that. It's Philo Talk on 99FM with uh, Nishan as well as uh, clinical psychologist Edwina, who is joining us in the studio for tonight. We've got more for you on the other side of the music. You also don't forget, more than welcome, of course, um, to chip in when it comes to the conversation. 061-383-484 is the studio number. This is Gerald Levert with Made to Love You on 99FM. As is Gerald Lavert on your favorite radio station, Made to Love You. As, of course, uh, we are having a conversation on Pillow Talk, all things to do with new relationships and uh, sex. 061-383-484 is the studio number. If you've got questions, if you've got comments, anything you'd like to add, you're more than welcome to, to do so. Edwina, how long does one have to wait after a breakup before getting into a relationship make i pick your brain what please do you think? go for it go for what it what do you think what, is what your do i think um, say your opinion. how long should you wait i think until you're ready mm-hmm. for another relationship Good until plan. you've 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 mm-hmm. healed but but then how mm-hmm. do you know when you've actually really fully healed do you heal fully Thanks for being a great sport. Yeah. Um, I'll help you out. <laughs> okay. The end of any relationship cuts deep. Yeah. Whether it's willing or not. Yeah. Expect it or not. Mm. So we need to take the time out to grieve and yeah. um, to deal with that type of loss. Mm. Uh, and moving on can definitely pose a challenge emotionally. Sure. sure. And so the timeline can vary. So you could have just said it depends. You know? Okay, it depends <laughs> That's the on... the diplomatic answer. Not that you don't know. Yeah. It really depends on the person and the person's resources. Yeah. And we grieve in various ways with different timelines. Yeah. And it also depends on our coping mechanisms. Sure. Our support. Yeah. Uh, and whether the relationship was healthy Mm. or unhealthy, uh, it is still a loss that we need to comprehend and process and work through. Mm. The length of the relationship surely does indicate also the length of recovery because the more time you spend together, Mm. there was more, hopefully, intimacy, Mm. uh, memories made, uh, a lot of triggers, places you visited and so on, then a short-fleeted relationship. And it also depends on the depth of the connection, like I said, mm-hmm. uh, this influences how early or late you find yourself moving on. It can be after a few days. Oh, That's wow. not true, I think. Oh, I, I don't that think should so. Be so the minority. Then maybe and that was not even a relationship. Yeah. 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 And there's no, I, I hear these days, there's like a talking face. Yes. <laughs> I try to be relevant because I've been out of the game for almost. 28 years? Yeah, 28 <laughs> so years. So I don't know if I'm much relevant as an expert these days, but I try to keep up with the times. Yeah. So 
there's no fixed standard or template for us mm. for how long it can take to get over a breakup. Dealing with these breakups, walking the mile with my clients, it's really, really tough, especially mm. when they endured traumatic endings from a long or short-term relationship mm. and it preferably require the longer time frames of healing mm. I've experienced in private practice. We should be cautious. Yeah. We discussed of A yeah. for the rebound <laughs> trap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and for sneaky links. Sneaky I links. think it's quite exciting for yeah. many. Before we enter another relationship, it seems like an excellent way to get over the heartbreak, to yeah. move on, because to get to back forget. to business, to yeah. get back to real life, get out there. We see it in the movies. It's being romanticized. Yeah. Free as a bird, you know, that type of thing. But rebound relationships, we know you burn your fingers, yeah. can easily become disastrous, to say the least. Mm. Rebound relationships have feelings also involved. It's not mm. only fun and games. And you can be a culprit playing with another important human's feelings being on the rebound yeah. so please let us appeal to you to be ready, willing and able to love the next person including yourself first, fully committed mm -hmm. and yet you have a lot of healing to do uh, and if you're not healed like you asked me, can you ever heal completely yeah. Um, I think it's a tough one. Some some we win, some we struggle with. Yeah. And if we haven't dealt with it proper, it can really cause chaos, havoc, and more heartbreak. Mm. It becomes this vicious cycle. Similarly, similarly yeah. with sneaky links. Sneaky links, I've learned <laughs> today. <laughs> like I said, I've been a bit out of the game. Yeah. So it's a slang term. Do you know what it is? If I um, can pick your brain again. It's, it's, I guess it's a little... Sneaky business? Yeah, it's a sneaky <laughs> business. It's like... Yes. <laughs> so... Not, not a serious situation. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So it's describing a secretive or mm. clandestine. It's also a new word I've oh, learned wow. today. So, so is that a relationship within a relationship? Like a secret relationship within a relationship? I wonder if one can call it a relationship because it's like a taboo type of venture here. Yeah. In a relationship, <laughs> in my books, that's not formally. Yeah. Uh, in, in professional terms, <laughs> it's a commitment and engagement which yeah. should usually be, especially after a while, a month or so, mm. become a public affair, you know. It's okay. it's okay if in the beginning it's secretive and so on. But yeah, the sneaky links... I think has more to do with engaging in sexual activity. So you're basically on the hunt for sexual, physical fulfillment uh, in the secretive and yes. forbidden type of meetings. Cheating. Let's call them meetings. Cheating? Is it cheating? Cheating on yourself, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's now after the breakup, you yeah, know, that okay, you engage okay, okay. in this type of rebound dates if I can call them in yeah. my name. So yeah. in a 2007 study it was recorded that 71% of people who'd gone through a recent breakup felt better hanging their guys mm. after about <laughs> three months. Yeah. So if you feel fine yeah. day two, yeah. month one, <laughs> no, 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 no. Research say. You're yeah. not there yet. Okay. Pace yourself. Okay. In another survey, 2,000 people in 2017, that's more recent, mm. their scorecard amounted to six months of recovery. Mm. That sounds a bit more reasonable. Mm. Because now you need to realign you. You know, a breakup and any type of loss, it's almost like a rebirth of sorts. But sure. you don't start from scratch. Yeah. But according to the divorce rates, I think that's a good indicator. Now, but divorce is now more serious, supposedly. Yeah. A 2009 study identified that people may take roughly, wait for it, okay. guess. Let's play uh, the guess game. 
I don't know. Just a rough guess. <sighs> I also was surprised and I also learned. And I was like, yo, this is serious business. <sighs> Roughly, we've been at three months cut off. Six months. Half a year? Six months? Yes. No, it's thrice that. 18 months. What? 18 months going strong it makes sense to me we mm. have been trained mm. with any loss mm. it takes you after surgery mm-hmm. uh, a, a world famous renowned uh, physician told me that after any operation mm. surgery of sorts mm. and this is also a surgery if you think yeah. about it mentally emotionally it takes the body six weeks to close up yeah yet to really recover and heal at least 12 months. Now, this makes sense to me. Yeah. You know, it's the readjustment, finding yourself mm. and then being ready and open mm-hmm. uh, to start anew, afresh. Oh, wow. 18 months. 18 months. Wouldn't have thought. We're wrapping things up on the other side of this. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. would have actually wanted this for about two more hours. Maybe I can twist my boss's arm. Who knows? We'll see. You also need to twist my boss's arm. <laughs> also true. This is Tyrese with Best of Me on 99FM. Mm-hmm. You are the best. It's Tyrese on 99FM with Best of Me. I just don't like how time is actually moving so, so fast because I feel like uh, there's just so much we can talk about, you know. We're talking about uh, new relationships and uh, sex with a clinical psychologist uh, who owns a private practice, by the way. Just want to put it out there. Uh, shout out to Halak Psychology. Okay, let's talk about um, makeup sex. How about makeup sex and having sex with with someone when feeling vulnerable or when you just, you know, got out of a a relationship with your partner? Describe the difference and, and how one can or should deal with that situation instead. Sean, yeah, how about it? Eh? <laughs> it, it we all uh, secretly uh, desire a bit of adventure. Yeah. And I think most of the times it feels like a good idea. Mm. So makeup sex we know is sexual intercourse after conflict in an intimate relationship mm-hmm. where it's characterized by intense Passion and <laughs> mystery and uh, the stuff of talent, no dramas and yeah. serious, and the drive and the excitement, which makes it thrilling for most couples. Mm. And when we have that makeup sex, we we feel vulnerable, and it's attributed to the sense of we lonely, we hurt. You know, you you suffered mm. uh, with this conflict. Mm. And, and and you didn't have your buddy, whether it's your your life buddy or your sex buddy in mm. your partner. Um, and you're too grateful that we can get back some normalcy. Yeah. Um, and you want that company. Yeah. You 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 play like hard to get, and you're still a bit angry. Mm. But but you look forward to that sense of comfort and just getting back into your comfort zone. Um, and um, rekindling things with with your partner. Sure. And the danger for both is that we foster this continuous unhealthy habit of conflict resolution, which is not actually a resolve because it's this distorted sense Mm. of ourselves and what we stand for and what we need and what we want Mm. for ourselves in in a relationship, a respectful, healthy relationship Mm. and the intimacy. And this opposes healthy communication because sex is an act. It's a work word you know and we need to talk through things mm. to resolve things um so we lack then conflict resolution skills and mutual understanding and we seek the pleasure principle in the stimulation yep. and um a lot of good feel hormones are released Mm. during sex that counter the conflict mm. um, and this can confuse us and, and, and mislead us uh, in our relationship and we also now have a twisted sense 
of sexual intimacy, you mm. know, um, that we actually must use it and use it as a leverage now of yeah. peacemaking or one-upping each other and, you know, uh, punishing each other yeah. um, and making the art other people the other partner feel in wanted for it mm. and it becomes a power struggle uh, and our instinct is to make the connection physically yeah. uh, it's the natural way we we don't deny that but this constant arousal of transfer of anger and then this erotic energize and quickly uh, this transforms into the sexual energy, but makeup sex definitely is not the solution. Mm. It is almost uh, Nishon like um, avoiding the significant things repeatedly, mm. these issues that come up. It's like here in Namibia, it's like changing lanes uh, to dodge the potholes instead of repairing the potholes. Sure. <laughs> and when the rain, the storm comes again, <laughs> you have to dodge again. Yeah. And the problem is never ending and it's not it resolved. Yeah. So verbal communication is the fixing mm. of the portal to secure now that it's rock solid and it's healed mm. and not only a lid is put on, you yeah. know, fix the thing off proper. Properly. So yeah. that the portal doesn't <laughs> need repair and opening up again for yeah. us to 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 move in those vicious circles mm. destructive patterns of mm. engaging intimately yeah. and we must recognize that makeup says sex can become uh, a routine for us yeah. and addictive instead of pressing the pause button re-evaluating our relationship and what it is and where it's heading mm. and diffuse the tension and really working through our Issues yes. by having fruitful dialogue, mm. uh, we we jump to this quick fix, yeah. and we don't enhance our skills of cooperation, of effort, that respect and kindness, in communication that we've preached the whole night, Nashon. Profound, awesome stuff. We're fast running out of time. I hate it. <laughs> with all honesty uh because i think uh there's 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 so much enlightenment and uh, uh so much information that you you shared with us uh tonight but just to to wrap it up briefly um wh what advice do you have for people or for couples rather let me use the word couples um that are in a new a brand new relationship Really get to know the person yeah. intimately on all levels, like I said. Mm. Take out the time, take out the effort, take out the interest mm. to really be engaged and present in the relationship and to get this person. Mm. Establish boundaries and expectations in the new relationship. Mm -hmm. Moreover, spend some time getting to know each other's values also because we often say that opposites attract and while that may be true for likes and dislikes yeah. personality characteristics it can be problematic when it comes to our values that we literally can't sit around one table later on mm -hmm. similarly values predict future success in relationships as well as lasting satisfaction, intimacy, and love. Prioritize yeah. intimacy. This is the biggest recommendation I can give to couples. Prioritize intimacy over sex. Mm. Unfortunately, I believe we lose this value more and more to a great sense, mm. and therefore we have more relationships problems. Try to let go of past. Mm. relationships and its issues and baggage don't sacrifice your whole life for the next person mm. uh, make each other whole mm. and celebrate life together in your unique ways as a unit and be intentional about quality time mm. don't just flaunt us the Instagram pics about Valentine's mm. and where you gallivanted <laughs> and living the good soft life as a couple sincerely spending quality time with yeah. one another enjoying each other uplifting each other knowing each other's love language yeah. and applying that words of ex affirmation mm. that kind acts of service Gifting each other for sure, quality time, and personal touch. And personal Always touch. Always key. 
That's the cherry on the cake. Thank you so much, uh, Edwina. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming out here to inspire us to be better versions of ourselves, uh, of course, in our relationships. Thank you, Nashon, on behalf of the elders <laughs> in relationships. I wish yeah. the new couples only well and the best. And remember, start it on the right foot. Started on the right foot. And of course, with that, we've also come to the end of tonight's edition of Nashan in the evening. We do this again, all over again next week, Monday. Um, as a matter of fact, Monday right through Thursday from 6 to uh, 10 p.m. Otherwise, you make sure you join us again on uh, Wednesday, which will be... Uh